and in the perineal so in patients of in case of autoimmune disorders so the bottom line is th17 will take care of autoimmune disorders and sepsis and of course fungal infections because it basically deals with infiltration of excessive and continuous infiltration of monocytes and neutrophils so is that clear yes would you like to add anything else to this helper t cell subsets now you know not... so now you know you can go back and correct your first pretest question answer so th1 subsets are th sorry helper t cell subsets are th1 th2 th17 and so like this adaptive immunity so once when the organism or any other offending agent comes in so it it takes some time to mount an immune response but when subsequent exposure to similar antigen happens it it mounts an immune response with, in a brisk manner in the sense it takes a very shorter time what is the reason how is it possible for the adaptive immunity to mount an immune response very in a very short period in a subsequent exposures excellent it's memory that is due to the presence of memory t cells which is again a sub set of helper t cells now you have to recollect your answer very good raga now you have to revi uh, revise your answer as helper t cell subsets are th1 th2 th17 and of course the memory t cells so the immune system helper t cells effect are and memory t cells effect our t cells are th1 th2 and th17 now again then the next uh, point is the cytokines associated with these subsets so th1 let's recollect th1 is will take care of which hypersensitive reaction remember one is never for one so type th1 will take care of th4 type, sorry type 4 hypersensitivity reaction right so this type 4 hypersensitive reaction is granular mostly the granular matter disorders your the contact dermatitis all these are type 4 hypersensitivity reactions fine so uh, you can recollect and tell me that cytokines associated with granulomas when you look when you look into any picture like sarcoidosis or tuberculosis granuloma being necrotizing non negative that doesn't matter any granular matter lesions the picture will show you some cytokines this three cytokines that we have to remember for this th <coughs> one subtype any idea cytokines associated with <coughs> type 4 hypersensitivity reaction or th1 subset okay so you should start with interferon gamma which is the most powerful cytokine of th1 response interferon gamma and then il2 and il12 so these are the cytokines of <coughs> type 4 hypersensitivity reaction or th1 response and then coming to th2 th2 will take care of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction which is anaphylaxis so anaphylaxis is mediated by which antibody ige there be some cytokine to drive the differentiation towards ige producing plasma cells can you think of any antibody that drives the differentiation towards ige producing plasma cells it's il4 so which cells predominate type 1 hypersensitive reaction? Eosinophils. So there should be some cytokine for the eosinophil growth and recruitment. It is IL-5. How do you classify cytokines basically? There are long, lot of ways of classifying cytokines. It's a big headache. It's very complex. It's one very simple, it's been a very applied manner. Uh, classifying uh, cytokines is whether they are for inflammation or anti-inflammation against inflammation so pro-inflammatory cytokines are a huge list you may find it difficult to remember so anti-inflammatory cytokines include you have to remember must know stuff so the il4 il5 il10 il13 and pgf beta so these il10 is missing over here il6 is a very subtle role to play in th2 response the major role is by IL-4, IL-5, IL-10, IL-13 and TGF-beta. Okay. Where is will you come across these anti-inflammatory cytokines? Where is will you come across these anti-inflammatory cytokines? 
saying healing and repair. See, when, in, when there is an injury, when inflammation is predominating, there is a domination by the inflammatory cytokines, pro-inflammatory cytokines. So, when it has to heal and repair, once only when the inflammatory cytokines come down, it, the tissue can heal and repair. So, they are the anti-inflammatory cytokines have a role. Of course, they do have a lot of role to play in multiple sites. Of course, this is one such example for the role played by anti-inflammatory cytokines. What is the third subset? TH17. So, as it is missing over here, the cytokine associated with TH17, secreted in TH17 responses, it is very simple, IL17. What is its role? Where it, uh, what, what does it take care of? This TH17? Very good. New recruitment of excessive and continuous infiltration of sorry, uh, of neutrophils and monocytes. This usually happens in autoimmune disorders, fungal infections and sepsis. Cytotoxic T cells, you know like the helper T cell marker CD4. Cytotoxic T cells CD8. And this basically has anti-tumor and antiviral immunity. That's basically by CD8 synthesis. Can you give me any other example for any other cells that take care of this they do the same function? There is a set of some other cells share the function of cytotoxic T cells. Again, a very high yield area. This part of the innate immunity. Natural killer cells. Very good, Raga. Natural killer cells. They also have this anti tumor, antiviral immunity. And this CD4 CD8 ratio, again, a must know point. What is the ratio of CD4 CD8? Where do you. Uh, where do you actually apply it? Where it gets reversed? HIV fine. Anything else? HIV at least we have like variety of uh, investigations for confirmation, for process of progression, prognosis and all. Can you <coughs> give me one example where we are actually dependent at least to major extent on this particular ratio in one fluid of the body to make a diagnosis. For that particular disease, the etiology is not it. Confirm treatment is again not a definitive, no definite treatment yet, and again no specific investigation. Again, we have a list of investigations, nothing is so specific. What's the disorder? Very good, Rishi. It's sarcoidosis. So, where will you look for the CD4 CD8 ratio? <coughs> not all kids will know everything, ma. You don't worry. Okay, okay. So, in which fluid we look for the CD4 CD8 ratio to diagnose uh, sarcoidosis? Lung fat sarcoidosis, when I correct, which fluid exactly? It's bronchoagular lavage. So, what is the normal ratio? It is 2 is to 1. It gets all reversed in HIV and sarcoidosis, as opposed in quite a lot of other disorders, but these are the commonly mentioned examples. And then come C TH1, we did have discussed in a TH1 will take care of uh, cell mediated in contact dermatitis, delayed hypersensitivity reaction. Good anurag ball. So TH2 TH2 subset will take care of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction where it induces the formation of IgE antibodies. That's the prime role over there. Which we'll come to this later. And which cells produce antibodies? Antibody production is a function of antibody production. Which cells will get differentiated with plasma cells and produce antibodies? It's B cells. Basically, it's B cells. You usually kids, you know, like what what will the answer is? The antibody production is an exclusive function of B lymphocytes. It's no. So B cells, so they just be resting like this. So whenever there's a need for them to be differentiated. The signals will come from helper T cells. So, this helper T cells will engage the B cells to activate this with the help of cytokines, resulting in differentiation of these B cells to plasma cells and secretion of antibodies. The bottom line is though antibodies are produced by B lymphocytes, unless they get stimulated by T lymphocytes, they are useless. They are nothing. So, the masters have to come and stimulate the B lymphocytes for the production of antibodies. Fine. And this, and again, again, I must know another point to stress over here is where this interaction happens. Some ligand receptor interaction. So, what exact, it has got a CD marker. For everything, you know, they have given CD markers from 1 to 
போகும் என்னடன் சம்திங் நவ்